Okay, this spot doesn't exactly ooze tech. It's an artist warehouse in a Sydney suburb. But move deeper through the creative commune and you'll find a makeshift science lab. And this guy, one of its founders, a transhumanist, polyamorous biohacker. You all know the type. Welcome to Biofoundry, Australia's first open access molecular biology lab. Sinister as it can sometimes sound, biohacking has turned into an exciting new field. It's do-it-yourself meddling with DNA on the cheap to tweak nature. And this is Australia's first biohacker lab, open to anyone willing to pay a membership fee. Let's get into it. And the name of this biohacking pioneer? Meow Meow. Do you prefer to be Mr. Meow? Mr. Meow Meow. No, meow's, meow's fine. Meow hit up generous friends for a lot of this scientific gear, and he hopes the lab will inspire people of all stripes to give biotech a try. It's about pulling people in with hands-on experiments, like extracting DNA from the strawberry. If you stir where the alcohol touches the strawberries, you'll be able to pull out some stringy stuff, and that's the DNA, so that's the instructions to make a strawberry. This is the first step in a biohack lab. Pretty much anything we're doing with molecular biology, we're gonna to need to get that DNA out. The flavor genes, the pigment genes, we can take these genes out and put them in other things. So you might wanna make an apple that tastes like a strawberry. You might be able to uh, take the pigment genes out and make a new type of paint. So you kind of take the most interesting properties of some organism, extract it out, and then maybe chuck it into something else and, and give it some new superpowers. And That's it. Yeah. Make everything glow. <laughs> A molecular biologist by training, Miao has put the lab to work on real projects, ranging from anti-mold paint and take-home STD tests to phosphorescent alcohol. Cool. Damn straight it is. <laughs> <laughs> Miao insisted that my next tutorial take place in nature. We set out for the Nuna State Forest, located in the famed Blue Mountains, about five hours west of Sydney. It's there that we hope to find the tiny creature at the heart of Meow's make everything feel like a rave dreams. So we're about to go to the Glowworm Tunnel. It used to be a railway tunnel they used in mining, and now it's been uh, decommissioned, and the glowworms have come back and re-inhabited the, the tunnel. I've waited this long and now I have to ask you, how did you get the name <laughs> Meow Meow? <laughs> I'd wanted to change my name since I was like 15. My friends and I just sat down and we just wrote down a huge list of names and then we picked the one that sounded the best. <laughs> so, What's your full name now? Meow Ludo Disco Gamma Meow Meow. <laughs> With the formalities out of the way, the time had come to meet one of Australia's lesser known biological attractions. Glowworms are nocturnal. They are generally less sensitive to red wavelengths of light than they are white or blue light. I guess to see him best, we've got to turn this off. Meow talks a lot about a lot of things. Sometimes he's hyping a mango that's been altered to do your laundry. And other times he's promoting hallucinogenated orgies to each his own. But without question, Meow's biohacking enthusiasm has worked with labs modeled on this spot popping up all around the country. Prepare yourself, Australia, for the phosphorescent revolution has begun.